It all started with the baby going missing. And a terrified search and rescue volunteer coming back from the woods, covered in deep cuts, who soon succumbed to his wounds. He was telling stories of fast clicking sounds in the night, coming from all directions, followed by his companions being torn to pieces by forces unseen. I was living in Windmere for a few weeks, taking a well-deserved break from my journey towards the monastery. It was supposed to be a couple of days of rest, but I've made myself useful as best as I could, helping people with various ailments or just providing some manual labor while enjoying the view of the mountains looming in the distance and a quiet life. The people of Windmere treated me well in return, a close-knit community and a feeling of belonging I've missed dearly. Most challenges were of the mundane kind. Were land torn by war and famine not so long ago, it did recover well. I was planning to resume my journey the following day, however, fate and other plans. It all changed one terrible night, when the village sprung to life with fear and confusion upon discovering the mutilated remains of a man who went outside with his newborn. Apparently, the child had been having trouble sleeping and was inconsolable until he had some fresh air in the arms of his father. The wife found her husband in three big pieces in the garden with smaller cuts all over his body. The more alarming thing was that the child was missing. The search party was quickly put together to find the missing baby and to eliminate whatever threat fell upon this small village. All theories pointed to some sort of wild animal, most likely a bear, the locals said. It didn't make sense how a bear could do something like that to a grown man in such clean swipes and with such speed. And what did it want from the infant? A snack for her cubs, maybe? Did it just run away, startled by the commotion, while still holding on to its prey? Time was of the essence. I quickly joined one of the four groups organized by the locals in case there was need of my healing abilities, and up we went. Windmere was the first settlement on the road east towards the mountains. With a few hills starting to dot the landscape and the banks of the Dessos River up north. A few signs pointed in that direction, so that's where my group decided to start the search. We were all quietly advancing for about an hour, investigating every sound we heard around us, hoping for a cooling sound or crying, if not for something for the grieving mother to bury. The forest was relatively easy to navigate, but it all started to look the same at one point, with no clues to reassure us we were making any progress. When we got close to the river, we started following its path. Another group signaled that they had found something further down the riverbank, so we made our way towards them with hope in our hearts for a positive outcome. They found a hole in the ground, covered with branches, leaves and dirt, when one of the searches slipped and almost fell into it. A handy torch revealed the long decomposed remains of what looked like people and wild animals. Someone, or something, dumped these bodies together and covered their improvised common grave further fueling the fear of something worse than a bear being at fault for tonight's events. We soon decided to go back to the village and report our findings, most of us trying to comfort ourselves with the idea that one of the other groups had better news than we did. On our way back, the silence was sustained by a somber mood and more questions than before. A short time after we came back to Windmere, a member of another search party emerged from the woods in a terrible state. Scratches, bruises and deep gashes in his arms and back, bleeding profusely and struggling to keep his consciousness. Through the chaos of trying to save his life and others asking questions to understand what happened, he spoke of a path deep within the forest up west. They were attacked by an unseen force that moved rapidly around them, making fast clicking sounds while obscured and sliced through them like a hot knife through butter. He survived because one of his companions fell on him while being ravaged by the attacker, but not without feeling the blades cutting through and wounding him as well. 
after it got quiet, he slowly started sneaking away and managed to get back to us. The wounds were very deep and we tried our best, but I was told that later that night, he passed away. What started as a senseless beast attack that took the life of one man and took his baby away turned into this quiet village of Windmere, losing 18 people in the span of a few hours. However, we now had the location where to continue our search. But the locals had lost so many in one night and were afraid to continue. A group of what seemed like mercenaries offered their help in dealing with this issue, or at least obtained more information. They seemed to have a lot more experience dealing with threats that were beyond normal. Even though I wasn't as confident or prepared, I offered my assistance. We were now seven in total, with weapons and armor donned like they were preparing for a war or a confrontation with some mythical beast. Stranger still, they seemed excited and remarkably lighthearted considering the situation. After traveling for almost two hours northwest, we reached our destination. The smell of rot and humidity slowly filled our nostrils, soon becoming overwhelming to the senses. We noticed pieces of decaying rope and cloth thrown around in the canopy, with some decorative pieces made out of twigs and dry bone dotting the branches. The dirt under our feet was covered in bone fragments and pieces of some recently butchered wildlife. The victims of the search party that dared explore this cursed place were bundled up close together, but a few were clearly missing, with the grass being flattened towards the denser areas of the woods, out of sight. Standing in the middle of this grotesque display of bone, flesh and decay, and after recovering from the impulse to spew, we noticed a sunken patch in the ground hidden by the undergrowth, which led to a small tunnel. The rock was scratched and chiseled away with what seemed like small, sharp tools going into the earth at a slight angle. There was enough space for us to crawl on all fours, going into the darkness one by one, hoping for answers or at least to survive whatever awaited us. After a few minutes of crawling in the ground, it soon became steep and slippery, spitting us inside the large natural cave. We fell on wet stone and mud, taking a bit of a beating from the impact on the hard surface or each other's flailing bodies. The echo announced our arrival, and to our delight, prompted a soft cooing sound from across the room. The opposite wall was filled with clutter, broken barrels and crates, and various objects arranged in a way that would imitate a rudimentary living space. Among the rubble, the baby we had been looking for was alive, comfortably sitting on an old rocking chair covered in soft furs recently obtained. An old leather bag filled with paper and charcoal was by his side, with other small trinkets, tattered clothes, and improvised toys. We were relieved to have found the child in good condition, and after a brief exchange, we decided to immediately go back and deliver the child to his mother, and try to prepare for a plan for the next time the creature decides to attack the village, as it was clearly not in its lair at the moment, and more importantly, we didn't know if it was alone. It seemed absurd to my companions that only one creature could do so much damage, and in spite of some protest advocating for us to wait for the creature, we at least agreed we weren't willing to risk a confrontation in its domain. The chatter was interrupted when fast tapping sounds started reverberating from another tunnel that we didn't initially notice. The whole group was ready for battle, as they instructed me to hold the child and stand back. I quickly took shelter amongst the clutter, trying to get as close to the cavern wall as possible. 
After a brief moment of silence, the tapping sound started getting faster and louder and out of the darkness, a raggedy doll with no lower body, a big head covered in slick, greasy hair, and oddly humanoid looking hands with sharp claws jumped towards the mercenaries with wild slashing movements. The battle with the creature began, with the fast moving attacker using its long limbs to quickly walk along the entire space, its nails aiding with its grip on the ceiling when it needed to avoid attacks or gain a better position, but it was determined to eliminate the intruders. It was also clearly trying to get around them and get to me. But the group worked well together and uh, one at a time used their martial and magical prowess to control the situation. At one point, one of the mercenaries started reciting a melodic poem to inspire his companions. But the puppet quickly found a way to him and with one quick slash took his voice away. He fell beside me, holding his bleeding throat as I desperately tried to offer assistance, but my magic was too weak to heal such wounds. The light in his eyes went away as he stared at me in terror and deep sadness, and all I could do was form a protective hold of the baby, turn around, make myself as small as possible while the chaos continued around me. Impacting sounds of metal yelling and screams, claws slicing the air, crumbling rock and wild magic united in a cacophony of sound that felt unbearable to hear. Among the fighting, two voices started chanting in unison in a strange language, with the doll continuing its rampage above them, reaching a crescendo after a few seconds while the air felt more and more electric. After a few moments, the commotion seemed to stop suddenly. With only a few gasps of air, gurgles and moans announcing the return of silence in this forsaken cave deep within the bowels of the earth. The child seemed to not know how to process the events that we both just went through, and I was still tense and afraid to lift my head up from it and scan our surroundings. As far as I knew, they were all dead. And the monster was right in front of us just staring with its one red eye and waiting for any sign of movement. After a while, I managed to slowly lift my head up. The mercenaries were all dead, with various wounds and gashes marking their limp bodies. Tears in my eyes tried to blur my vision and shield me from the nightmare, but our attacker wasn't in view. I knew I had to try and deliver this child back to safety, but every movement felt like a mistake that could mark our end. When I finally got up and closer to the massacre before me, on the ground between the bodies, that a small amber-like gem, as big as the palm of my hand, with the doll encased within. This creature seemed to be frozen inside. It was horrible to look at and every part of me screamed to run away from it. But it was too dangerous to be left there for someone to find and break open. I took the leather bag, placed the gem inside, and slowly made my way out. I marked the location of the cave for the locals to find, and then made my way back to Windmere. The mother grabbed onto her baby while continuously crying and thanking me for saving her son, while I kept trying to regain focus and tell everyone what occurred. Meanwhile, they were preparing to mourn and bury their dead. The locals helped me recover, but a deep sense of urgency built inside of me, telling me I had to reach my destination as quickly as possible. I had no idea what the mercenary wizards did to this creature, but the priests at the monastery surely had an idea what it is and how to deal with it. I had time to go through the notes I found in the bag, and from what I understand, this is what happened. Based on scribblings left by what I would assume to be a few abducted children across time, 
Apparently, a group of mothers prayed to whoever would listen to protect their children during the war that was ravaging the land years ago, after it took their husbands and disease and famine were threatening their lives. Something listened and used the children's dolls or toys as vessels. However, they took their defensive role way too far, protecting the children from anything that might happen to them. Soon enough, the parents themselves were attacked for small things such as raising their voices, as well as other children, even for a silly, hurtful remark. Whoever or whatever seemed like the slightest threat was eliminated, with the dolls even attacking each other. The children were often being locked inside their rooms, left to waste away in the shadow of their protector's twisted care. Instances of dolls bringing raw food were mentioned in a possible attempt to feed their prisoners, but was taken away if the children would have negative reactions to it, even if the reaction was pure fear caused by the terrifying creature before them. There was always at least one child in the care of a doll and would soon find another if it died. The mission was always to save and protect children. It is unclear where it all started because the one we found wasn't the first lair. It is possible it started downstream and made its way up the Dessos River. This is clearly a situation of accidental summoning that could become a major threat if not dealt with by capable priests. Which is why I intend to get this gem in the hands of those that can properly contain or even banish it. At first light, I will take my leave. I've been on the road for over a week, sleeping in the forest, traveling by day, trying my best to forage for food. It has taken a toll on me. I need the safety of a bed, a warm meal, sleeping through the night without fear of sudden attacks from wild beasts or highwaymen. Even speaking with another person would lift my spirits. There is a small village close by. I'll take a day off from traveling and recharge for the rest of the road ahead. I wish I could continue on my pilgrimage as intended, but I can't complete it if I collapse in the middle of nowhere due to exhaustion or exposure. It is such a pleasant sight. A bustling village, the smell of fresh food being cooked, people living their simple lives in peace and safety. I got settled in last night, had a long bath, a hearty hot meal, I slept well past noon. Now I am enjoying some coffee at this tavern in the Central Park, at a table under the shade of an apple tree, surrounded by joy and laughter. I think I can make myself useful, help people with various ailments, or just provide some manual labor if needed. It reminds me of home. Our neighbor was an amazing cook, would always give us some snacks in the afternoon, probably leftovers. So I think